Yes, I think we can start. We have good enough number of the participants today here. So okay. yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, our seminar series. I'm Yongguk Jung from uh, Sustainable De Production Development and also our Industrial Tra Transformation Platform. And today we have uh, Jonghun Woo from uh, Seoul National University in Korea. And he will talk about shipyard uh, production planning and scheduling with reinforcement learning. So uh, I think we can start our presentation from him and we could have some discussion after his presentation. So Jonghun, please start your presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zhang. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you for giving me this good opportunity. And I want to this time be a good chance to share my experience. Actually, the, the title is Production Planning and Reinforcement Learning, but it is more close to the integration of reinforcement learning and discrete event simulation. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. Actually, I have had various experience from startup and foreign software company and to the big enterprise. Uh, through this time, I concentrated on the production management of manufacturing companies. Especially, I aimed at the scientific management of the manufacturing system. Especially, more and more specifically, I have spent most of my time to discrete event simulation previously. And in terms of my specialty, my first knowledge area is planning and scheduling, method based on advanced planning and scheduling. And the second area is various algorithm for the, for the manufacturing simulation, such as discrete event simulation and some inverse kinematics, and also including ergonomics. And third area is the comprehensive industrial engineering. And recently, I'm focusing on the research with the interest in artificial intelligence, especially machine learning, and more specifically, the, the reinforcement learning. And today's presentation will be about the meeting, the integration of this creative event simulation and artificial intelligence with the reinforcement learning. The purpose of this seminar is to combine machine learning and discrete event simulation. Through this seminar, I will identify the previous limitations of discrete event simulation with my past experience and introduce new opportunity from newly emerging machine learning technology. Eventually, I would like to introduce that we can develop the very good artificial intelligence by combining discrete event simulation and machine learning. As I have mentioned, I have been conducting various simulation studies as part of the, the digitalization of a shipyard since about 20 years ago. And through these efforts, I was able to, I and my team was able to lay down the foundation for simulation-based production management in the Korean shipbuilding industry. Also, in the meantime, I worked in the automotive field. Through these experiences in the automotive industry, at the time, the automotive industry was ahead of the shipbuilding industry in the in digitalization aspect. So I was able to quickly build up the, my production simulation ability. And it may be a little bit self praise but I'm very sure that I, my, I myself, 
I am one of the people who has built the most virtual factories in Korea. However, despite the experience of so many virtual factories, nothing remains as a digital asset currently. Also, the output of most production simulation project has been exhausted and lost for a specific purpose. So based on my previous experiences, there are following limitations with respect to the production simulation, especially in shipbuilding area. The first limitation is heavy line on the commercial solutions, such as the any kinds of discrete event simulation software. At, at the times, the quest from DASO systems were factory simulation from the Siemens. The second and the most important part is that what if strategies of previous discrete event simulation cannot be overcome only with the conduction of the simulation work. In other words, the result for various scenario can be validated using simulation, but the final decision can be only can be made only by humans. Also, from this point of view, simulation could not be an optimization method because optimization is to solve the problem, but in case of a simulation, it is the running with the, the made simulation model to, to a certain amount of time. And additionally, as a new technology field of digital twins, many companies are considering virtual simulation as a core module of digital twins but most of them have not differentiated from the scope of existing simulation works. In the meantime, the new opportunity have emerged. Do you know this photo? Have you seen this one? Yes, I think I'm familiar with this guy and this photo. Maybe most of you can remember there was a big event in 2016, which surprised the world. In board game Go, the artificial intelligence win the professional player. His name is Isedor. And that event was thought to be impossible previously. And in terms of technical viewpoint, that was Alpago Lee that wins the Lisedor in Go game. And although it wasn't a big issue compared with the game against Lisedor, after the game between Alpago Lee and Isedor, the Alpago Zero, the, it, it, this is a final evolutionary version of Alpago appeared, it means it de developed. And this Alpago Zero algorithm win all the previous versions. It means that Alpago Zero wins all the 100 games, Alpago Master. And one thing noticed in here is that previous version of Alpago Zero used the supervised learning using the huge quantity of game, the previous game records. But in case Alpago Zero, this artificial intelligence was trained only with Come on, one set it to the Pardon? Sure, it's actually the screen. I, I, I think there's just some mistake. I think you can go on. I just mute her. Is there any problem in? No, I don't think so. I think. Okay. Okay. Let me. Let me continue. She was talking about a lawnmower, so I think it was a different discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. So, Alpago Zero is an artificial intelligence that was trained only with one hundred percent reinforcement learning, 
without any game records. So for the for the for the, your understanding, the supervised or the unsupervised learning, most learning algorithm is data-based learning method. However, the reinforcement learning is totally different from these two kinds of algorithm. Now let's review what is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is a way to learn by interaction with the environment like a person. And also reinforcement learning is applied to problems that require the sequential decision making. It means that the, this is the, the theoretically, it is called Markov decision process. It means that any problem that can be modeled as a Markov decision process, at all those cases, the reinforcement learning can be applied. And although this is a field of machine learning, it means that reinforcement, reinforcement learning is a one of a kind in machine learning method. This reinforcement learning learns through the experience with environment, not from the data. And one more thing is that reinforcement learning is not an alternative to the optimization method. It, it, this means that reinforcement learning is required to the problem which cannot be solved with the traditional optimization method. In technical point of view, this reinforcement learning is to solve the well-known this Bellman equation that looks like this. And traditionally, this equation used to be solved by dynamic programming. With the contrast to this algorithm, reinforcement learning deals with problem based on the Bellman equation, but does not cover all the, does not, does not search all the spaces of the problem like dynamic programming. Reinforcement learning is a way to find the optimal strategy without having to visit all the spaces of the target problem. So maybe this equation can be difficult for the first timers, but I think that you only need to remember the, this is the Bellman equation and this Bellman equation can be solved like this. this. This equation means that the exploitation and exploration with respect to the problem domain without visiting all the, all the states that is given by the problem. So looking at the schematic diagram like this, reinforcement learning solves the Bellman equations, which could only be solved by calculating all the values of the state that is relevant to the target problem. This matrix composed of states, and this is called the Q table. This kinds of approach, this is a traditional approach of reinforcement learning, but in case of small problems, dynamic programming quickly converts it, this the value of a Q table with only a few calculation iteration. However, if the size of the problem increase, then the amount of computation time increase exponentially. So it was forgot, this, this reinforcement learning was forgotten for a while because it was hardly applied to practical problem owing to the course of dimensionality. This is a traditional approach. With this limitation, 
reinforcement learning that was already exist about uh, 30 years ago seems to be forgotten. But this reinforcement learning is surprisingly rebirthed by the, the professor Jeffrey Hinton. He is currently a professor at Toronto University and through an academic paper called Deep Belief Network, he can overcome the limitation of a previous neural network problems. And more technically, he develops an algorithm called convolution neural network through Boltzmann machine and the backpropagation algorithm. And when the deep neural network is combined with the reinforcement learning, the barriers are disappeared by approximating the existing Q-table with a new neural network. So in this reinforcement learning framework, this neural network replaces the previous tabular type problem. So let's look at a simple example. This problem is called grid world. And it is a game where you move the red box, left, right, and top and down to, in order to avoid to avoid these two barrier and the target, the objective is to, to visit this target area. Looking at this problem from the outside, it is the answer is so easy to go there. But from the viewpoint of this red, this red square, it is difficult to know which direction is the best strategy to move? If you fall into a trap, this the green triangle, this, this neural network will receive a minus reward. And when this square arrives to target area, then this neural network will get a plus reward from the, this problem state. If you use dynamic programming for this grid world problem, you can calculate Q value. This value is called Q value of all cells through iterative calculation. And this red, red square moves to the best policy that is given, that is calculated from the dynamic programming. In this process, even if the red square does not visit, all the values of, values of all the cells have to be calculated. So the larger the problem, then the exponentially the amount of calculation time increase. However, reinforcement learning, which use a strategy that makes it Exploration and exploitation takes longer to learn with compared to dynamic programming, but trained deep neural network shows very good performance. In addition, even the moving, moving obstacles can be well avoided. You can see here this red block avoid the green obstacles, then it reached to the target point. This is the result of the, the neural network based reinforcement learning. As far the everything is okay. Yep, I think so. Yes. Okay. Well, there, uh, there are several misunderstandings about reinforcement learning. Let's test it together. First is that is reinforcement learning, the latest technology. What do you think about this question? No. Yes, no. It means that this algorithm of the reinforcement learning itself was developed about 30 years ago. Next, 
the does the reinforcement learning need big data? The answer is also no, because reinforcement learning, uh, learning is to, to train the neural network only by interacting with, with his or her ex the environment. And finally, is reinforcement learning is a omnipotence algorithm? Very surely, it's, it also no, that the answer is no, because this is a very well-known problem that is called the cart pool. This problem was treated as a best, the best practice with reinforcement learning, but in this case of problem, see any kinds of dynamic the analysis is more appropriate. So we need to check when reinforcement learning is needed and is more help, helpful for the given problem. Okay, first is that the reinforcement learning is, is gives a good result when a problem without a correct answer. For example, rock, paper, scissor. Scissor games is one of a kind that reinforcement learning can be applied. And also the problem of a complex system with infinite number of cases. This kinds of problem can be handled and approached by method of reinforcement learning. And also the, any problem that all the states of the environment are unknown, in this case, the reinforcement learning can be also effectively applied. And also this is a, the very the required condition. It means that the given problem have to have the finite number of action patterns. It means that if there are infinite number of actions, that problem cannot be treated with reinforcement learning. And the problem of a changing environment can be also treated with reinforcement learning. Actually, this is a point that is differentiated with the traditional optimization algorithm. In case of traditional optimization algorithm, the changing environment cannot be reflected in those algorithms. So it's a game again. Do you know StarCraft, all of you? I think that in most one or two times the, the have experience with this game. Actually, it wasn't as big news as AlphaGo, but it caused a quite burst in artificial intelligence industry. Although it is a much more complex game than Go or a simple game, this is Alpha Star is an artificial intelligence. And this Alpha Star trained through reinforcement learning. And more technically, it is trained as a multi agent problem. And this artificial intelligence wins the pro gamer called MANA. And this is the paper about Alpasta that is written by the team DeepMind of Google. Although this is a very difficult paper, but I strongly recommend you to reading because this paper contains an important message that can have relevance to the manufacturing industry even if the theoretical point of view is excluded from this paper. So there are important insights expressed in this paper. The paper identifies five characteristics of the StarCraft game and mentioned that problems with these five characteristics are the targets of reinforcement learning. First one is game theory. Second one is incomplete information. Third is long-term planning. Fourth is real-time problem. And final is massive workspace. Actually, this, these five characteristics is belonging to 
the StarCraft. But also, these five characteristics can be applied to any kinds of manufacturing systems. So I think that this is an insight from the, from the practice. It has been a rather long story. This reinforcement learning is a new opportunity for existing discrete event simulation. Of course, the, I don't want the harm the disc previous discrete event simulation. It means that conventional DS is still used for technology in various, in various fields, such as factory design, logistic analysis, and etc. Et However, the problems that can be modeled with Markov decision process and have the aforementioned features in previous slide, reinforcement learning can be a good solution. And the new opportunity can be open in discrete event simulation as an environment of reinforcement learning. And the artificial intelligence created in this way, beyond the role of decision support of existing discrete event simulation, this algorithm can eventually replace human and realize an unmanned manufacturing system, finally. So now, in the remaining, during remaining times, I would like to, to introduce several case studies. With this background, I'm conducting research to automate and also optimizing all kinds of production plans of a shipyard. This diagram shows the overall composition of the shipyard production plant. Of course, not all of these areas are approached only by reinforcement learning. For example, in the case of birth planning, the traditional constraint certification technique is more efficient than reinforcement learning. But for the rest of the bubble parts in this diagram, through the level of completion of each study can be slightly different, but all of them are conducted using the reinforcement learning with the simulation environment. The first case is steel stone yard. The steel stone yard is a space to the steel plates are waiting before those are put into the fabrication factory. And since many steel plates are stacked at the same time, it is very difficult to, to manage the stacking orders for the input date. Therefore, the number of claim movements varies largely depending on the order in which they are stacked initially. So in this study, I developed a stacking algorithm to arrange the random ordered steel plates to the order of the input date. And to solve this problem, we used the reinforcement learning and very simple simulation environment. And in this problem, the learning target agent for reinforcement learning is the agent and which determines the placement of random ordered plates. And this is the result of the learning. In case of the very small problem, and along the, the advance of the, the episode number, initially the, the, the trained results are not good. In, the good means that the dark color plates go, have to go downside and the white, close to white plates have to, have to locate it to the top side. But after 50,000 episode, it's almost perfectly arranged, even though the incoming price order are varying. And even if the size of the problem is expanded to more big size, it shows a very success, the successful learning result. And this reinforcement learning takes a lot of time to make neural network to learn. However, but the neural network once trained 
then put out the optimal action in near real time. The next example is um, the automating the activity planning using similar environment with the previous steel stone yard. And this is uh, activity planning and the object function is the workload. So object is to balancing the workload and technically to minimize the deviation of the each daily workload. And we also trained the activity plan environment by using these kinds of the simulation and because there is a little time remain, so I'm going to the result. The results are very impressive. In most of the test cases, the results were better than the manual result. Actually, this manual means that the rule-based, it means heuristic-based, the planning, the planning result, and compared to this rule-based planning, the this AI trained through reinforcement learning shows a better result. Also, even about 1,000 activities, trained AI shows the better result than manual planning. Also, we can see that the result can be more improved if, if we scan one more time, then the final result was improved. So this is also a very successful study. And next is an example of applying discrete event simulation kernel as an environment. And a problem with the shunyards is a block assembly line that is composed of six processes. And model definition is the permutation flow shot and input data is processing time of each, pro each, the, each blocks and scheduling problem is to determine the optimal input sequence of each blocks and to the objective function is to minimize the make span. Historically, this kinds of problem was dealt with the meta heuristic optimization, such as the, the genetic algorithm or simulated annealing. But all those kinds of traditional approach was failed owing to various rule restrictions. Where well, we also have very hard times to find a good solution with reinforcement learning. Various reinforcement learning algorithms such as DQN, DDQN, or A3C were not successful. But finally, we have found one that was uh, RNN, it means Recursive Neural Network Based Pointer Network. And Pointer Network is a learning method suitable for the combinatorial optimization problem. While existing reinforcement learning algorithms follow a sequential action sequence, but in case of pointer network receives a vector for the state space and optimize it through the learning, then finally put out the optimized sequence at one time. And the learning result also very good. It can be confirmed that the neural network trained with 40 blocks. This algorithm even effective when the number of blocks are different. It means that this neural network was trained only with 40 blocks. But in test case for 20 blocks, 40 blocks, and 60 blocks, also yesterday we have we have we have we had a successful case with 100 and 200 blocks, all different states. The result were successful with this trained the reinforcement trained neural network. So, finally, is current researches. Recently, we are conducting reinforcement learning research on more diverse the various type of production systems using discrete event simulation as environment. 
and we are solving the flexible job shop problem for the fabrication scheduling in shipyard. The fabrication shop is characterized as the flexible job shop problem. And next is the dynamic unrated parallel shop is being researched in order to solve the integrated hull outfitting and painting scheduling. Although these are still in the early stage of research, good results are coming out. For example, of a flexible job shop problem, the model-based BQN approach was successful compared to the previous, the research, the previous literature result. Also, in case of unrated parallel shop, this result from the reinforcement running shows a better the result in terms of tardiness or make span. So in the future, for this type of production system, we are planning to discuss with the shipyard for the collaboration with the actual problem that is challenging. So the, my and my team's final goal with respect to this research is to make an unmanned shipyard by replacing artificial intelligence for all decisions in production planning. So currently, my and our team's research covers only these areas. But I think that through the continuous research with reinforcement learning, with the DES environment, most areas of shipyard can be covered with artificial intelligence. So this is the end of presentation and, and shortly, this is the summary. I firstly authored about my long experience about descriptive and simulation. And I showed some limitations that was identified through long history. And in the meantime, new opportunity that is machine learning and artificial intelligence comes out and reinforcement learning is one of them and its environment with descriptive and simulation. And finally, several case studies were introduced for the prospective visions in the shipyard and also including the other kinds of industry. Okay, this is my the final slide. Um, this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Yep, thank you very much. It was a very interesting talk. And maybe we, if you have any question, you can just uh, unmute yourself and you can ask. Or if not, I have some questions. Do you have any questions or comments? I didn't know there are so many people in, in this room. Yeah, we have 24 participants and I think some of them, they already left maybe some lunch. Uh, yeah, but it was around 25 or 24. Yeah. This is a little bit more than we expected. Oh yeah, I saw Tarun and Eric, you, they raised their hand. Maybe Tarun, you can go first and Eric, you can go next. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for a nice presentation. It was really uh, interesting to hear and uh, quite thought provoking. Uh, I actually, maybe it's not so so tough question for you. That's I was um, you advocated that reinforcement learning is not optimization method, but at the same time, it is. Uh, you said that it's used when we don't. Uh, have a kind of proper method for optimizing a problem. What if, uh, and according to my understanding, uh, which is which can be very naive, like uh, uh, reinforcement learning is usually used when we have limited data and uh, we would like to predict a situation uh, where we don't have. So don't you think that would be an appropriate solution for optimizing that problem uh, using reinforcement learning? You mean that the, the different aspect between traditional optimization method and 
newly developed reinforcement learning. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, the object of reinforcement reinforcement learning is not the traditional optimization because the when we treat the same problem mm -hmm. means that if the, this problem is with the this problem is to 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 determine the the designed as a fixed data in that case the traditional optimization is more 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 appropriate however if the target problem is continuously varying and also if there are more kinds of the, the various kinds of constraint and any kinds of limitation. So if target problem has the, the, the varying states, at the case, the traditional, the optimization algorithm cannot solve varying states. Compared with this approach, the reinforcement learning can solve even if the tar target problem is continuously buried. So that is the point that I have. Is, is it? Yeah. Answer? Thank so you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the reply. Yeah, maybe Eric, you can go next. Yeah. Uh, th thank you for a very interesting presentation. Uh, I, I I was wondering about uh, maybe more on the on the practical uh, side or on the managerial side, if you will, uh, when when you implemented this uh, study that you that you showed us in the shipyard the industry and in the shipbuilding industry, I was wondering uh, to me that that sounds like a very traditional type of industry with perhaps a lot of manual labor, a lot of uh, these big, big machines uh, that may take months or years to be made. Uh, in, in my mind, th this doesn't really sound as uh, usually the what, what we would uh, think of as the most uh, digitally advanced of uh, manufacturing industries that there are. Mm -hmm. I, I was wondering about the challenges that you faced uh, when uh, when, when trying to develop your, your study, when trying to implement uh, this, this solution that you presented? Actually, the, the most people think that the shipbuilding environment is not, not well developed. So latest technology is not appropriate for the shipyard. But in my think, when, when we started this up new approach, the, the existing data in shipyard have very, very big variability. The, and this big variability, the causes a traditional optimization method has failed. But in, in this new approach with reinforcement learning, this algorithm can deal with this big variability. So although the environment of a current shipyard is not highly technologized, high, highly technologized, but because the, the characteristic of existing data, in that case, my approach and our approach, it means that reinforcement learning can show very good performance comparing with the traditional approach. Is it is it answer for your questions? Yeah, absolutely. I I, I think it's uh, so so interesting and uh, such such a great possibility for many many industries that find themselves in the same uh, position. I, I think uh, many, especially, that have to assemble this unique type of products that don't uh, that are not made in series, so to speak, uh, could potentially benefit from 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 this unique approach actually the the characteristic of human centered and low the the not not so the the high technology this this point gave us a more opportunity to take this kind this kind of research area 
Yeah, maybe I can have a follow-up question. So uh, you mentioned that you want to develop a unmanned shipyard. So it could be your next step. And I'm just wondering then, uh, what was the reaction of the industry partners? So they are also willing to change their like a uh, workflow or do you, how do you see the, the future role of our role like a, as a like an engineer what could be our role if if there is a shipyard without like a unmanned then what could be our role how do you see our future it's a too difficult <laughs> question anyway my mentioning about unmanned is targeting the the planner planner or scheduler currently Actually, most work in shipyard, such as fabrication, assembly, painting, such kind of jobs cannot be replaced by computer or machines for the time being. But in, but in case of managerial work, especially for planning and scheduling, in, in this area can be replaced by the neural network algorithm if we continue this kinds of work. Already the, the number of the planner and scheduler was decreased in Korean shipyard situation. So they also want to want to want to have this kinds of algorithm in order to reduce their effort and their time. They 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 want to save their own time by adopting these kinds of new approach. So my unmanned means is limited to the planning and scheduling currently. So we, we could have still have some hope to work in the industry field, even though you replace, you want to replace the manager role. Yeah, it was very interesting. Do you have any other comments or the question? Other participant? I have one. Uh, no. it's Jerry here. Um, just a, a very different angle, really, to, to this. But uh, if we think about this method um, or this approach, I mean, uh, I can see the application here, but we can think of something very different when we develop a new product. Uh, uh, it's basically, there's a lot of uncertainty and it's also a discovery process where the end point is often not the same as a start point. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there's a lot of time spent on always trying to optimize schedule. But as you know, there's quite a level of uncertainty too in terms of, you know, a test can fail, etc. So I'm just wondering, do you have any experience or do you, do you see any possible application to apply this kind of, uh, of uh, techniques to uh, planning or scheduling the, uh, the work uh, in, in that kind of a very different context? Uh, your question was, the, the stuff, it's very difficult to hear in my computer. So uh, uh, your, your question is about the current planning and scheduling method or? No, I'm talking about could we apply this kind of um, method uh, in the case of product development? Aha, uh -huh. product development. Yes, actually, and well, the, the theoretically, this reinforcement learning can be applied to any kinds of MDP model. MDP means the Markov decision process. If you are talking about product, product development process, and this process can be, can be modeled as a Markov decision process, then oh, yes, that process can be, can be treated with re reinforcement learning. So that, that's my answer. If that process can be Markov decision process, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is very surely possible to use this algorithm. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay. Anyway, this this is very my my experience is only two years with my colleague. Let me introduce some several students in, in this room. I have studied with these students and it's not takes so much time. It means that it means that the barrier to this approach is not so big, not so high. So so if you can design your own problem as MDP or any interaction with the given environment, all that cases can be can be approached with this reinforcement learning, I think. So it's very, very good for challenging for any kinds of problems that what the, those were not solved with the, the traditional or previous method. Yeah, in, in, in terms of the like a trend or the reinforcement learning topic, I think that is very hot, like a emerging topic in many areas. And I'm just wondering what was the like a big motivation that you you, you shift or not may, maybe not the shift, but you change a little bit from the DES traditional DES simulation to reinforcement learning now. And what was the like a like a big motivation? motivation? Yeah. Actually, as you know very well, <laughs> I have I have studied discretive and simulation for 20 years. But the final conclusion of discrete event simulation itself was uh, what if. It means that we have to we have to make input data to the simulation and we have to judge it or we have to evaluate with the simulation result. That is the that is the limitation that I have experienced. However, this reinforcement learning runs by itself only if there is a good environment. And my motivation is that this environment can be discrete event simulation. That point is my motivation. And actually that works very well by now. So, so. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that was my motivation. I recommend you, Professor John, to, to join. Yeah, actually, our research, our, our research team, we are also like uh, planning to like uh, applying reinforcement learning for some logistics problems. So I think we should have more like a seminar or like a, like a collaborative work together. And that might be very beneficial for very, both. Very good. Okay. Yeah. I wish to. Okay. Yeah, it was very interesting. Do you have any more questions or comments from the participant? And yeah, a, a question that I that just occurred to me is, uh, what, what do you see as as your next uh, step now that you've come this far, and that uh, I guess. The, the shipbuilding industry has has realized about the potential of uh, of this approach. Uh, what what uh, I, I suppose that uh, this your collaboration with the shipbuilding industry will continue. What uh, what is perceived as yeah the next uh, the next problem? Next problem. Uh, actually, currently we have solved some steel stone yard and block assembly line. That was very successful by now. But more challenging area is such as the, the integration between different factories. And in order to, to solve these kinds of integration or interaction among several factories, we have to study and also we have to develop the multi-agent reinforcement learning. Currently, we have only used and developed a single agent. But if we 
if we develop and if we realize the actual shipyard problem, then we need to, to develop multi-agent based reinforcement learning. That is our next challenging part. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think it was a very interesting discussion as well. Uh, I think we can finalize our seminar today. Thank you for the very good, nice presentation and very it was very informative, Jongun, and it was a very good discussion for all of us. And yeah, uh, we can finalize our session today. And we you can see this uh, recording at, uh, after this seminar. So I will share the link all for, for the, all the participants. Thank you, everyone. And especially for special thanks for the uh, Friday night seminar in Korea. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. 연구가 잠깐만 남을래? 엑셀럿. 바이. 소연이하고